They're just some malfunction drills. We're going to run malfunctions, then we'll probably take a break for lunch after malfunctions. It's coming up by noon already. And for the ease of not ripping stuff up, take one dummy round. We want to put the bullet down. And if you just kind of set your hand on the slide, because there's no magazine in the gun, so if you push back on the slide, it'll release it. I just want to set up the stove pipe. And you want the bullet down. I'll just set it up just like this. Setting these up, I just keep my hand against the slide that way when I release it, I can uh, just set it back down in there. All right, there's a couple ways to go about these. I think one is the right way, which is pretty commonly taught. Um, and then there's also no, all we need, all we need right now is just one of them. I just moved it back and did that one side of things. Dummy around in the magazine. So if there's nothing in the chamber, chamber's empty. I have a spent casing sticking up out of here, pull it down like that. They roll easier out of these. And then I've got a magazine with a dummy around it. It's called a stovepipe for obvious reasons. You look down the site, it's, it's like a stovepipe. You can't see the front sight. All right. The way I clear these, there's two ways to go about this. Um, one way I see commonly taught, I hate. It's called a sweep. We're all going to try it. You just put your hand on top of the slide up here and give it a sharp snap to the rear. Just like this when you do it fast. 
said, I got an active target, I'm ready to go boom. And if I did it right, I probably got some cartridge stuck in my shirt back here someplace. Right. But if we do that, and I go do a check, get one, it always picks up the next round. So I never have a problem. So good, sum up again.
there's a small risk, but there is a risk that you're going to bend the feed loop on the magazine. The clock magazines don't seem to care, and it doesn't bother them. Because remember, yeah, because because when you're ripping when you're ripping it out, this cartridge is already. Here, let me use mine just to show you. Because the magazine is sitting here like this. That cartridge is halfway out. So when you're ripping this thing out, that cartridge is getting ripped out like this. So it does it does flex the lips a little bit. Um, I, I haven't seen it as cause a problem, but you know, Murphy said it's going to be a problem. I know what it's going to occur. So I probably put another one in. In real life, it's going to be a whole lot harder to do than it was just in here because these are plastic and we set this up nice and slow. When that slide's running full speed and really wedges a couple brass cases in there, they're going to deform and form around each other in there. It can get really, really, really tight and ugly in there. If you've got a gun that doesn't have a good plate on the bottom you can get a hold of, again, it's going to get really ugly down there because you might not be able to get a hold of it. My two Kimbers are better. The Kimbers, yeah, any of the 1911. Yeah, you can get you got your fingernails half in there. All right. If you've got a gun that is super wedged in there tight, you just cannot get a hold of it. You're going to have to relieve the pressure on the slide. So that's what's making the whole thing so tight is the spring-loaded slide is pushing everything up in there. So if you've got one that's really totally screwed up, guess what? My favorite hand position, which is what? Hand across the top of the gun. If i got, if I got a double feed and I cannot get the magazine out to do the, the rip part of the rip, rack and reload, I'm going to Put my hand on top, I'm gonna to grab it. I don't know, he was trying to flip. Yeah, no, he was trying to film over. I'm gonna get my hand back here just enough to take a little pressure off the slide. Just by tightening my thumb. You feel the slide move back? Mm -hmm. Just like the armor's takedown. Because all I need to do is just relieve the pressure that's up against the double feeds. Then usually hit the mag release, and maybe I get my fingers under here somewhere. And it'll usually pop off pretty easily then. But if it's really wedged, I gotta get the pressure off that cartridge. And it's, you know, you need three hands, but you don't have them. But normally I can rip them out, but if you get one that's really jammed, or you get some tiny gun that's, again, like the 1911s where it's a steel floor plate and things about a 16th of an inch thick, you get your fingernails under it. Yep. You don't know, have to just do it with it. Push it, put your finger under there, pull one out. That's the only place where the smaller guns are easier than the great big long full size guns, because the longer it gets, the further you're trying to get your hand away from here to get a hold of it. Like you walk through your ex with that big grip on the bottom, you, you got you got something to grab a hold of. So you rip it out, rip it out of the gun, rack the slide a couple or three times just to make sure you get like crap out of the gun, and then reload it. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying the only problem with this is, is like I shook out the last one. I'm out, new mag in, back back where I'm at. So those are your basic malfunctions. You're running the stove pipes. Uh, what your failure to eject is what they are. Uh, double feeds are the worst ones of the bunch. You know, just double feeds, rip it out, rack the slide, clear the malfunction, reload it, go back to what you're doing. All right, questions on reloads, either proactive or reactive. You guys have them down enough. My, 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 my big goal here is you guys have the reloads, the proactive and reactive, down well enough that you can go home and you can practice this stuff on your own. Because you understand what you're doing. You understand. Just don't work out the steps. You know, if I'm not sure how where the hand wants to come back, bring the magazine up. And just let it rock. Just let it rock 10 or 15 times. And then stop it. And then bring the hand back to you. And then just start the just let it run back in. You want nice natural motion. You don't want to, you want to be trying to jerk it and do weird things at the end. When I when I've got my gun, when I'm doing reload. The other, the other place I see people try to, my gun's lined up. I always keep that bone alignment with my hand, barrel, forearm, all lined up. So when I'm shooting, when I come off of my target, my forearm is still locked. My, I treat my, my wrist and everything in here is just like I got a solid cast or brace on when it's coming back. Again, because if I, if I bring the gun back and I, I let my hand cock or do something like this, instead of keeping it where it's supposed to be, then when I come back on, I gotta straighten up my wrist and everything else. If I treat this like it's all locked in stone, when the gun comes back, I reload it. Now it's just a matter of driving the gun forwards and backwards. Yeah, I want to maintain the bone alignment even when I'm bringing the gun back in front of my face, because that'll keep things speeded up. Because I see, I see a lot of new people when they're shooting, when they do the reload, they'll bring it back and they'll have their, their wrist will be cocked now. So I keep it all in the same orientation, just like my hands in a solid cast. So I'm not bringing the gun back and up or down or whatever else at the wrist. So it's always just this way. That way I'm just driving it in.
in and out straight. So have a look at that just for a couple of times. Just with that part of the gun, bring it back. Just to make sure you got it. Make sure your wrist is not getting bent or torque when you're doing that. So try that if you're done.